hello lovelies welcome back to my channel if you're new here thank you for clicking to watch uh, my name is kemi and i'm a nigerian who recently migrated to winnipeg manitoba canada if you're a returning subscriber mm, you guys you know the real gist now all right so firstly let me once again wish you all a merry christmas I wish you happy holidays i pray that this season brings you a lot of joy peace happiness and all of your heart desire okay? so in today's video i'm going to be talking about something important something that most of you have probably already heard before maybe you've, you are still in your home country or of course for people that are in um, canada already maybe who have arrived as a newcomer um i'm going to be talking about survivor jobs yes what are survivor jobs what do they mean um how long are you supposed to do them for what are the survivor jobs you know all of the gist around survivor jobs things they never told you about survivor jobs and everything um just important about survivor jobs so if that is something you like to learn about if that is something you like to hear then you should just stick to the end of this video if you're so cheap in that i would really appreciate if when you watch the videos you like you know it's just a Give a thumbs up um drop a comment in the comment section and of course just share with friends subscribe if you're yet to you know it just boosts the visibility of the video and boosts how youtube recommend it to other people so thank you so much for doing that i really appreciate it so um let's get back into the video of today okay Today's video is sponsored by Hubble Marketplace, a platform that allows you to earn money from the goods and services you offered. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to sign up on the Hubble Marketplace platform. It is as simple as ABC. Click on the sign up button on the top right corner. After that, all you have to do is enter your email address, your name, create a password, and then um, check all the available boxes then create account after creating account a uh, mail is going to be sent to your email address confirm this email to show that you you were um, the one who really created this account and now it's time for you to set up your profile so that you can start making that cool cash right next thing now is for you to select the location where your business is located or rather the location where your business is situated this will enable you to gather or rather to um bring clients from that location so pick a new listing and then select the category and the subcategory under which your business falls in in this tutorial we're going to be using hair and makeup as a you know dummy account so just click uh, all you need to do is to fill in the expected boxes of how much you're going to be charging per hour and kind of services you're going to be offering and all of that so there are also some checks that you have to fill and um, accept um, while setting up your account like i said guys this thing is as simple as abc you should also have a picture of your services one that is really going to sell you very well then when you pull up all these things and then you put up the amount you're going to be charging there you go guys it is that easy so create a profile bank adding a picture of yourself maybe a picture that i like what you do you know just make sure you sell yourself sell yourself properly because that's really the beauty in all of this and that's it guys that's just as simple as it is and then there you are you're just gonna go live and then you're gonna start to make money if you have not yet done this guys you need to hurry now to www.hubble.marketplace.ca so you can start making money so you're also going to be prompted on your payment on how you want to be paid or the accounts that you want to be paid into. Please note that payments are going to be paid, made ahead of the services. That is, your clients are going to pay you ahead just to lock on your time and to lock on the service for that day. Hubble Marketplace uses a very secured mode of payment, as you can see, which is used by other companies also. So guys, you can be sure that your data and your information is in safe hands. Hurry up now to hubblemarketplace.ca to get started thank you so welcome back guys now first of all let's just talk about survivor jobs what are survivor jobs or why are they called survivor jobs well um i believe just as the name connotes or as the name implies survivor jobs are those jobs that you do um to pay the bills right to maybe when you are just arriving in canada and you're not yet getting the job in your dream career or you've not gotten the job that you hope to do so survivor jobs are those jobs that you do temporarily that helps you to you know survive as the name is <laughs> to pay the bills because of course the bills are not gonna wait immediately you arrive the bills start counting you know and then of course at this this is not the time where you want to exhaust your proof of funds within um say two three months so um 
survivor jobs are those jobs that you pick up and they are jobs that require little to no experience um, um little to no um references also and uh, also helps you to gain canadian experience of course you know that when you arrive in canada there's a thing called canadian experience so these survival jobs are those jobs that helps you to transition into your main job that is if you've not gotten your main job at the time of arrival i hope that explains it right my point is that survival jobs are jobs that help you to you know um get on your feet that helps you to survive yes so now let's talk about some myths or what people do not know about survival jobs now like i said survival jobs are um they require little to no experience and they're always there like they're always um it has a high turnover right um those survival jobs because people sometimes do it when they just arrive just to um past time you know and then when they are done with it you just leave it so that means there's a high turnover people are always leaving and then more people are coming in like people that are just arriving now what people what they will not tell you right about survivor jobs is that really survivor jobs are something that can easily um if you're not careful right if you are not disciplined if you are someone who is not very focused at what you want you might get carried away and then get comfortable in the survival jobs i hope you understand what i mean my point is that uh, survival jobs allows you this flexibility right because you are not working um uh, full time say you're someone who just arrived and you want to go to school a survival job is like a good way to do that it allows you just like students it allows you to um go to school and then also allows you to make money at the side so my point is that it's so comfortable and um it's so comfortable and flexible to the extent that if you're not careful you might get um carried away and continue to and might suck you in and then before you know it a year two years you're on the survivor job meanwhile i um i should also let you know that um for survival jobs they most of them pay like the minimum wage right so each province has its own minimum wage and these jobs survival jobs can range like okay so i'm going to be talking about the survival jobs that are available right so that you also get to know the survival jobs what are they and then what sort of experience is required for you to do these jobs also another thing i want to chip in before i start talking about the types of survival jobs is the fact that um survival jobs are the fact that you are doing a survival job um, does not belittle you, right? One thing you should know that um, these jobs has to be done, right? These jobs are there, you know, to be done. If you do not pick up one of those survival jobs, or if no one picks up the survival job, then who is going to do it, right? I also should let you know that in Canada, there is dignity of labor. Whether you're a cleaner or the person that is sweeping the road, even though there's nothing like that here, right there's a mechanized way of doing that my point is that no matter the job there's a dignity of labor so never ever or no one ever looks down on someone who is doing a survivor job maybe someone who is doing a who is a janitor or cleaner or someone who is driving the bus no because you'll be surprised to know that even some of the people doing some of these so-called survivor jobs make a lot of money right so why and they are paying their bills right so why does anyone have to look down at them but what my point is that one thing i've seen here is that no one really looks down on anyone no matter the job you are doing like everyone is respected in their own job and they are all essential workers like if they are not there then some things are going to be lacking i hope you understand what i'm saying if they are not there if those people doing these job, survivor jobs are not there if um these survivor job roles are not there then a lot of things are going to lag a lot of things are going to be uh be on hold like a lot of things depends on them i hope you understand all of my gist so i just wanted to give like a preamble into survivor jobs and also i want to advise that if you're someone who is coming newly and um of course you want to pick up a survivor job uh, you should pick up a survivor job in something that is related to your career or in something that is related to your career path let me give an example you've been um you're someone who has been working in a bank you understand what i mean you've been working in a bank if you were the manager of a bank now this is an example please no, take note this is an example you can keep a survivor job in your field can be um a teller 
here so you, a survival job in your field is going to be like a teller here because you are not doing exactly what you were doing back home right so survival job does not necessarily mean washing toilets or sweeping the floor those kind of things survival job is by the time you go two steps or three steps down what you would normally do like when you go two or three steps down your level that's like a survival job like there are a couple of people who came from their home country as a doctor you know as you can't just get here and then expect that they will just hand it over to you like that because you do not even have a canadian experience so if you take advantage of the role where you are of the survival job you have it gives you the opportunity of gathering the necessary canadian experience so that when you eventually apply for that job that one you've been aiming for and they ask you how can you relate or what's your experience that makes you fit for this position you can easily relate to you know what you've done in your survival job so one of the mistakes people make is that they pick a survival job that does not in any way relate to what they want to do right you want to work in a say bank and then you go pick up a survival job in walmart I don't know if you understand my point so let it be a bit related yes you may pick up a survival job in walmart but what do you what are you doing in walmart so you can pick up a, uh, a job in um, in walmart as maybe the till or um, accounting clerk or sales i hope you understand what i'm saying so it has to be aligned it has to be a bit related to what you really want to do right so that way um when the time comes for you to get that main job you want you have some experience you've gained um some experience and then it can easily translate to the next level you can um, easily translate to the next stage you're going to i hope you i'm making sense right i think i'm making sense right another thing i want to talk about is that let me note that there are some people who come to canada and don't even pick up survival jobs at all like they come here and straight into it they get like their dream jobs they get what they've been doing there are some people maybe like accountants um nurses some occupations right where the jobs are readily available and they keep going so they don't even need to pick up like project managers you just need to come here do like some sort of certification and then before you know it you are in that job so this doesn't apply to everyone right there are some people that get here and immediately before you know it they get um, their dream job so they don't even have the opportunity of picking up a survivor job so that tells you that this doesn't really apply to everyone but if you are someone and then your that job you want does not come or what you wanted to do or what you've been doing back in your home country does not come immediately you arrive it is wise or it is safe for you to pick up a survivor job just to ensure that you're paying bills especially if you are a family person and you have a family trust me you're gonna need that survivor job to sustain the family and to keep things going because <laughs> that proof of funds by the time you convert it well it depends on where you're coming from well from where i came from by the time we had to convert the proof of funds to canadian dollars mm -mm, it wasn't there right so survival job is just something that is going to help you or that is going to sustain you till when you get that dream job or to when you get that job that is going to pay you optimally let me also quickly chip this in and advise that if you are coming as a permanent resident or if you're a permanent resident you're coming um it's always advice and you have plans right to study this is just by the way you have plans to study it's always advisable that you do it um within a year or as early as you arrive right because there are some funds or there are some benefits that are available for permanent residents that um allows you to do those kind of things so you have to take advantage of them and they're available as newcomers so once you start spending once you become a year or uh, two years three years you are no longer a newcomer right and some of those benefits may not be applicable to you so that's just to cheat that in so now let's begin to talk about the survival jobs that are available out there what are the common or readily available survival jobs for um newcomers so the first one i'm going to be talking about which is like the most known or which everyone knows about is customer service right customer service is like there like it's a lot it's plenty <laughs> for lack of words right because you can actually arrive in Canada and get a customer service job within two weeks of arrival. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that much. Customer service jobs are very readily available. Now, let me talk about the customer service job. What do you need to do a customer service job? Usually, when you want to do a customer service job, there are some requirements. Like I said, you do not really have, need to have like those five years experience or something like that for you to do a customer service job, right? All you need, uh, most of the things you're going to need, of course, you're able to speak the language. 
good knowledge of the language of course they're going to interview you and know how you're able to communicate right those are like the basic things for customer care and i should also chip in that everyone does one sort of customer care or the other you know speaking on the phone calling someone wherever you've worked you've done some sort of customer care as long as you uh, interface with someone you interface with a client you interface with your <laughs> you know your boss even at home you have a shop whatever it is you've done some sort of customer care right so for customer care jobs, what the requirements, what they're going to need. So when you're applying, they will want to know your internet speed. Maybe for your home, you want to use your home Wi-Fi. They want to know your internet speed. Do you have a computer? What is the operating system of your computer? What type of um, computer do you have? Do you have a quiet space where you can work? Do you, you know, those are like the kind of questions they want to know. And then you have to prove those things that they are available, right? Also, like I said, I already spoke about language. Um, are you able to communicate effectively? Are you able to, you know, um, have a conversation with um, your clients, with your customers? So that's for customer care jobs. And customer care jobs, usually, they, like I said, these jobs pay the minimum wage. So depending on the province you have, just check the um, minimum wage of the province you are going to or the province where you are. So most of them usually pay um, the minimum wage, right? And then they range from full-time to part-time so you can do a customer service job as a full-time you can also do it as a part-time if you're a student for example you can do it at a part-time so you choose the time you want to work for right and also for the customer service jobs there's some sort of flexibility to hit because depending on what you have they can be placed on just calls or you can be placed on emails that emails one is the sweet one because i know someone that does emails and she just flexes like she's having the time of her life so uh it depends on the kind of um interactions they pull you onto so the, because there are different types of interaction interactions so those are the uh points you need to know about customer service jobs okay i hope i made sense thank you I should also let you know that about customer service jobs some of them provide you um how you need to work right they provide you a desk even though you are working from home you should also know that most of them are remote you are working from home customer service jobs do not really require you to be like in a office space you do the job from home they, some of them provide you with a system uh a table your headsets everything you need to work just for you to have a space to put all those things right some of them provide those things some of them them do not provide those things so it depends on um the company or the customer service agency you are working for right okay so now is the time for you to please like this video okay like it like it yeah click it click it give me a thumbs up okay and subscribe if you're yet so to. the next survival job which is also very common which is readily available is the um support work or yes yeah, support worker healthcare support worker you know they are you can call it different names it can be a support worker or care worker whatever the name may be so care worker is a is a job that um requires you to take care of people right yes as the name calls it's you're supposed to take care of people now there are different categories of people they can be young people they can be children they can be adults whole people and you know so many of them so there are different categories of it it can also be special needs children it can be special needs young people it can be special needs adults it can be even um daycare yeah daycare workers are also classified as care people okay because it's you're taking care also of children right so different categories it can be children that are okay or children that have special needs so it depends really but whatever there's going to be a big bracket of it called um care workers or support workers now some of them also the scope or what you're required to do differs right there are some that there are day workers that day jobs where um they are in a home right the people you're taking care of are in a home and then all you need to do is go there provide some sort of support um physical support emotional support mental support some of them just requires you to speak with them to have a conversation keep them active take them for a walk some of them their food is already there just give it to them some of them you have to cook those foods you should also know that there's training in all of that they don't just put you in the jobs right you have to get trained you're going to be trained in everything you're required to do so depending on the kind of um Okay, it is like there's a whole lot of care jobs out there and they are readily available. Of course, w the things you need to do a care job is um, you will need a CPR and first aid certification. You will need um, 
you have to do a police registry check yes that one is almost for all the jobs right you have to do a police registry check and that is usually 40 dollars here in winnipeg you do it at the police um um headquarters downtown also you need to get a child and adult abuse registry check yes they need to check that you are not a child or adult abuser i think that is really relevant so those are most of these things and in some cases you also need to a certificate in non-violent conflict resolution right because um in some of the special needs you care for some of them may be a bit harsh or a bit violent so you need to learn how to you know resolve those violent without harming or hurting anyone so um customer care is a really broad one you should also know that for all these jobs they're going to train you before you get on the job no one's just going to put you there without knowing what you're supposed to do right also requires some level of um mental work because you need to write reports daily reports weekly reports monthly reports and all of that depending on the job that you are going for like i said there are various there are thousands and thousands of organizations that um provides care um that provide care to people that provide care to children that provide care to adults that provide care to young people so it just depends on um the one you are going for I hope you get my point and also like i said this is also full-time you have part-time and a lot of there are different scopes to it there are different levels to hit so the next or the third work which is also common out that i want to talk about is retail and hospitality i call it retail and hospitality because this is another very broad space it's a very broad one retail and hospitality includes working in retail stores working in um the big stores maybe a pharmacy store working in uh walmart stores like walmart working in walking stores you know um food stores uh working in hotels working in um diners or restaurant fast food restaurants and all of that so all of that group is called retail and, uh, and hospitality right and the job or your job position can range from maybe cashier or clerk or cook or bartender or valet or you know the job is a lot in that space retail and hospitality i should also let you know that retail and hospitality is always always hiring now retail and hospitality is a job that requires someone who has you have to know what the job entails before you go into it now this is why i'm saying that retail is a job that requires you to stand for a long time for example you're working in walmart and you're attending to the checkout you have to stand for a long time you have to be on your toes for like eight hours or so and then you have a 30 minute break so if you are someone who cannot withstand such kind of working conditions or also they will also tell you um some of those things that you'll be required to do like list lifting something as um as heavy as say 10 20 50 pounds you understand so you need to understand the kind of job and what it entails if you're working in a say um, hotel if it's something that requires you to keep walking around walking around being on your toes for um, extended hours you need to understand right you need to understand the job you are getting into before you pick it up that's why you observe that or i have observed that when i walk into any of these stores it is right there they are always hiring mcdonald's is always hiring walmart is always hiring dollarama dollar tree they're always hiring because some people take these jobs thinking that it's something easy and then before they know it, they are tired, they can't stand for long hours and then they leave the job and then they start to look for more people. So you need to understand, there are someone who has been doing something similar back in your home country, of course then, because the job is readily there, it is available. You just need to apply and then they pick you. Those ones are very, um, they pick people very fast or they hire people very fast because they always need more people uh, most of the time. So um, another one which I want to talk about is um, a cleaner or a janitor. Yes, that is also another job that they need a lot of people, right? Because, uh, well, depending on the kind of person you are, if you're someone who is really easily irritated and something like that, you might not want to pick up that job. I think people also, like I said, pick up some of these jobs not knowing what is expected of them. And then at the end of the day, they quit or they leave and then they decide not to do it again so all of these jobs are survival jobs they are readily available they are right there um so it depends on what you want right it depends on which one of them aligns or fits with where you are going 
I should also mention that all of these jobs, all of these jobs I've talked about, all of the survival jobs, or should I call them all of the temporary jobs that you pick up, right? They have benefits. So it's not like um, because they are survival jobs or because they are part-time jobs, because they are temporary jobs, you are not entitled to benefits. As long as you have up to, or you're working for up to 16 hours in a week, you are entitled to benefit. So please go and check your offer letter. If you're doing a part-time job and you are doing up to 16 hours and the organization is not giving you benefits, please go and meet them. Go and tell them that Kenny said they should be paying you benefits. Just joking, right? Okay, but my point is that I've learned and from what I've read, as long as you're working for up to 16 hours in a week, because I also work 16 hours in a week because of my daughter that has to go to school. I can't work in the morning, so I just work from three i work three hours in a day i'm one hour administrative for administrative duties because i'm a supervisor right so my point is that you're also entitled to some of those benefits you're entitled to um dental i need some there are some health benefits and all of those benefits right so you should also take note that because your survival job doesn't mean that you don't get benefits you also get benefits you're in the right place you're in the right standing you just need to feed your family you need to feed yourself and you need to pay bills right okay so that is it guys i'm sure i'm i'm not sure if i've left anything out but i've checked my notebook i think i've covered everything that i need to um speak about regarding survival jobs please if you have any questions or if you think there's anything i've left out please write it in the comment section. I would love to read about it and I would love to comment on it. Okay. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget again, once again, please don't forget to like this video and go back also. Go and like my previous videos. Go and watch them. Yes, I've not been watching my previous videos. Please do. Okay. Please go and watch my previous videos. Like them, drop a comment, share with friends. And um, thank you so much. I would really appreciate when you do that. Um, I think that's the end of this video. Let's just wrap it up here, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Yeah, because this video is going to be coming up on Saturday. So enjoy the rest of the weekend and um, bye for now.